number literacy. Awesome. Being able to read and write numbers, I believe, is equal to being able to sound out letters to be able to read. And if you're trying to do mathematics without being able to read a number properly, it's very difficult for you to understand what anything you're doing in math or for you to have an understanding of the value of those numbers. If you can't read them, you're not going to be able to feel comfortable about working with numbers. So I made up this activity. Uh, I was pregnant with my first baby and my husband was doing a PDP course, becoming a teacher at SIQ. So we were in New Westminster for the summer. And I thought, oh, I'm not just going to sit around. I'm going to take a course. So being able to read any number can be done by just focusing on what you say after each digit. Did you have a question? No, okay. So I need a couple of volunteers. Awesome, thank you. Would you please two, would you two of you come up? As you see on the sheet, you practice saying the first digit of a number and then saying 100, and I need one more person. Thank you, one First digit, and then you say the number. And you can please choose the number. Just one of these. Yeah, pick a card in your pocket. Okay. Also, what to make pick a card. To help students to feel like they were engaged. And what's the first one? Personalize the instruction. I would have them color them and maybe even put their name at the bottom. So the class would have a personal um, connection to this activity. Would you please hold? Oh, I need to stand here so the camera gets you guys. That's good. Would you please hold the number above your head? Great. Now we would practice saying this number this way. You say the digit and then you say hundred. You say the next digit and then you say T, not ten, but T. Then you say the last digit. So we do it all together. One hundred. Okay. So you can read you can read any number, can you? Any three-digit number is simple. Let's try this one. Oh, this one I colored. Nice uh -huh. Hold well, that above your head, please. Oh, and let's switch you guys. There you go. Try again, everyone. Five hundred. No, 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 no. Say the number. What is it? Five T. One. How much do you think they like that? <laughs> five hundred five to one. <laughs> There's another episodic memory. There's another use of their episodic memory, I should say. And they go home and tell their parents, Mom, this is under really weird. Yeah, yes, yes. do five T and four T. Could you please hope oh, that's not the right thing to just do? They're supposed to be in zeros. Sorry. Well, this is such a boring zero, but there you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right, holding them up. Try again. Five hundred zero zero T. No. Sorry. <laughs> when there's a zero, you don't have to say that at all. Okay, let's try. Five hundred one. one. Do you know how hard it is for kids to learn how to say a number when there's a zero in it? Of course you do. You've been with kids at all, you recognize that difficulty. So when there's a zero, you just say you don't say the T, right? So they recognize, oh, you say five hundred. So that's, that's just awesome. a yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh! It, it has. They're all. And you can even see the kids go. Ah, I get it. I can read this number. They can then practice what they what they've done in class with others, and they get a chance to stand there. They get a chance to hold the card. They actually decorated some of those numbers. They get some connection to it. Um, to practice then writing it in words, and then taking something in words and writing it. In it's really important to do both of those. You'll see that in your handout, number literacy practice sheets, it's like page six. I made this up to help kids to, and I, what I did was, oh, this is the thousands part. Okay, this, this will become an applicable next session. Once you have taught students how to read any three digit number, which is what this is, how to read any three digit number, then you go into how to read any number. So I need some more volunteers. And I used to have 
uh, everybody come up and hold numbers in in a digits, like three people there, three people there, they have three digits, right? But then I thought, no, this is ridiculous. So I'm just gonna <laughs> let you hold that in between. Oh, you need to hold that on the other side. And you hold that in between the two, and you do hold this in between, okay? So what we call the words million and thousand is space names. In metric number writing, in metric number writing, we use spaces to show the different, what's called periods of numbers, right? This is the million period, this is the thousand period, and this is the ones period, okay? So again, practice over and over, reading the three-digit numbers, and of course you're gonna spend a week lots of time practicing reading three-digit number and depending on what grade level, how much time you spend. Then you're gonna practice reading any number this way. So we know how to read this three-digit number it is, everyone. 704 million 185,293 and why would you practice saying and the decimal marks the end of the whole number just like a period marks the end of a sentence it's the end of the whole number part so if you practice what you say you always say and when you come to the decimal and you never say and until you come to a decimal so and this is really fun in the classroom <clears throat> Kids who are used to, and this is most of them, saying 429 for a number. No, you don't say 429. If you say and, it was 400, 2T9, right? And of course, when we practice 2T, we say, how do we really say it? Oh, we say 20. But it's really fun to say 2T. So you practice them being able to read any three digit number and then the names of the spaces. And then this literacy practice sheet helps them to write it out. It's just good for them to practice writing it down. Um, when they're doing space names, I'd have them write them in capital letters. And <clears throat> on the back, you'll see that it is written out in numbers, oh, sorry, in words, and they write it in digits. Capital letters for the space names. All they need to be able to do is read or write three-digit number, and then they can write do it on, do it on their own. Converting words to numbers, they would look at a, a word, uh, sorry, a number written out in words and look for the space names, million and thousand, and then write down the three digits and then the space in between. Okay. And then use reading numbers to develop their confidence and understanding of place value. You know how there's always this question, which digit is in the 10,000th place, for example? They look for the space name thousands, they look for the three digits in front, and they know the one that's in the T's place. There's not, it's so simplified, there's no confusion. Do you understand? Should I say it again? Okay, so here's an example 258,673,910. You were asked to find which digit is in the 10,000th place. So they think million and thousand have those space names. Identify the thousands period, and I use this is a secondary school term, but use it in elementary school. A period is the three digits that are in front of or behind spaces. Okay, so identify the thousands period. It's the three digits in front of the thousand space. Uh, look at six hundred seventy-three and find the tens. Which one's in the T place? The seven T is in the T place. In this example, it's seven. So the answer to this is which digit is in the ten thousands place? The seven. Do you understand how it simplifies it? And they're not doing this, oh, where's ten thousands? I mean, a hundred thousands, ten thousands. They just know the three digits, hundred, ten, and one. And they know how to read those. They practice three digits forever. And then can apply this to any number that has the space name. 